Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. And for this video, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the mysteries that I have been reading over the summer. Now, I realized that since starting Booktube and March Mystery Madness, that for the past couple of years prior to this year, I had tended to limit my mystery reading to March. I don't know if it's because I got tired of them and, and needed a break from mysteries for a while, or or uh, at some point I would pick up a mystery and think, oh, I'll save this for March Mystery Madness. I don't know, but I don't want to just read mysteries in March. I want to read them all year round. I enjoy mysteries. I've got shelves full of them. So this summer I did manage to read a few mysteries. Now part of it was due to the fact that I am now leading an in real life mystery book club at our public library. So I'll tell you about um, the books that we have been reading this summer for that. And then I've got a couple more too that um, I just picked up. So when I first took over the uh, book club at the library, the first selection that we chose is Naked Came the Manatee. It is by Carl Hyacin, Elmore Leonard, Dave Barry, and a host of other Florida authors. Now this is a really interesting book because Dave Barry started it, he wrote the first chapter, passed it off to another author, they wrote a chapter, passed it off to another author, author and then it eventually ended up with Carl Hyacin, who did his best to wrap it all up, <laughs> even despite the fact that every single author had to introduce their own elements into the book. And the interesting thing is that uh, several of these authors brought their own characters to the book. A lot of, uh, almost, I think all of them are Florida authors, and some have written series. So within their own books, you know, they've got characters within their series, and they brought those characters into this book. So it's a huge mashup of all these different Florida detectives and characters and, uh, and everything. And really for what it is it's not that bad. <laughs> you know, it, it got some low ratings and even within our book club, most people I think rated it a three uh, and, it, and a couple of people a two. I gave it a four because I took all that into consideration and I thought, you know, for what he had to work with, Carl Hyacin really wrapped this all up pretty decently and uh, and it was entertaining. There's one main character that's all goes throughout the book and that's the manatee and uh, it, there's some far-fetched business with the manatee and all of that but you know it's just all in fun and uh, you know if it sounds interesting to you then you might want to take a look at it. It's just 13 I believe 13 authors 13 chapters and uh, uh, we enjoyed the overall experience of reading it. It was fun. And and learning also about each author. And I looked up all of their books. And uh, there's a couple of them that I'm interested in uh, in reading at this point. So uh, we'll see. Maybe next March Mystery Madness. <laughs> so then another book we read for our summer, uh, I mean our in Real Life Book Club was the first book in this uh, Flavie de Luce series by Alan Bradley called The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. Now I had read it twice so I didn't reread it but soon after book club was over I did pick up the second book The Weed That Strings the Hangman's Bag and I listened to this on audio. All of the audio versions of the Flavie de Luce series I believe are narrated by Jane Entwistle who is great but for some reason it still had a hard time keeping my attention and I feel like maybe if I was reading it I would stay more engaged with it but at the same time I really enjoy her narration so I don't know what the answer is. Uh, it was really slow moving at first. I finally did sort of get into the story a little bit more but uh, this is not my favorite series by any means. I still want to continue reading it but this uh, was just kind of hard to get into. It was about a, a puppeteer basically and his assistant and kind of goes on from there. If you don't know about this series, it takes place around 1950 in England. And Flavia is a great character. I, she is a, uh, an aspiring chemist, very interested in poisons, and she's a great character. Then another book that we read was the first J.P. Beaumont book by J.A. Jantz. It is called Until Proven Guilty. I reread it for book club. I have read almost all of the whole series. In fact, my husband and I have this one checked out from the library right now, Betrayal of Trust, and I think this is the 20th book, 19th or 20th. So um, we are ready for this one. J.P. Beaumont is a uh, police detective. When, when it starts out, he, he goes through 
quite a bit of changing. At this point now, he's retired, but he's working with a, um, a special homicide unit uh, when we get on into the later books. But it, it's a great series. Interestingly, I remembered from the first time reading it, that the first book was pretty racy. I was thinking that it had a lot more foul language and that it was uh, a bit more violent than, uh, and also had some gratuitous sex scenes, which it kind of did, but they were not as steamy as I first thought. Maybe it's because I've read so much more <laughs> since then that I'm a little more... Um, I don't know, maybe not as much shocks me anymore. I don't know, which is kind of sad to say because I... I still like what I like, and I and I like things that are a little more calm and feel good. But the J.P. Mama series is excellent, and um, it, it just wasn't... There wasn't nearly as much foul language as I had originally thought that there was when I went back and reread it. So, uh, anyway, uh, it was called Until Proven Guilty is book one of the J.P. Beaumont series. And if you're interested in that series, I would definitely start at the beginning because that really sets the tone for the whole series. Although some of the uh, reviews I read on Goodreads from people who read other books in the series before the first one said that if they had started with the first one, they didn't think they would have continued, that they liked other books in the series much better. So if you're like me and you always start at the beginning, just know that it probably will get better, and, and I think it has. Okay, then um, just on my own, because I had planned to read this in March Mystery Madness and I couldn't get my hands on a copy because it had just come out in February, is the newest of the um, Hannah Swenson Mystery Series by Joanne Fluke. This is Raspberry Danish Murder. Uh, now, just a little note about this series. You definitely want to start with Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder. This is 20-something in the series. For the majority of the series, there's been a love triangle. Then two or three books ago, Hannah got married, and I'm not going to tell you who she married, but she's only spent a couple of books being married, and in this book, her husband disappears. I'm not going to tell you who her husband is, but uh, there's a little twist at the end that I really didn't see coming, and uh, I thought it was pretty good. It's uh, for people who really enjoyed the whole love triangle thing. They, uh, I've read some reviews, and, and they didn't really enjoy this these last developments in the series but maybe in light of what's happened at the end of this book maybe it'll kind of go back to being <laughs> what it was before i don't know i probably shouldn't have said that uh anyway i heard that there is a uh, christmas book coming out this year uh, within the series and uh and this is really the i think the only cozy mystery series that i am completely caught up with i've been reading the series for a long time i've read them all in order even the short stories and things like that and uh yeah i'm excited to stay caught up with it then because of two different online cozy mystery book clubs i read murder in the mystery suite by ellery adams now our book one cozies club that meets on our mystery madness goodreads group picked this for uh, last quarter and then sometime after that uh, Courtney the protagonist her and uh, books of my heart picked this for their uh, I think was it July or August maybe August um, selection so two different groups reading it at the same time and I thought okay I'm gonna read it <laughs> and uh, it was cute the uh, book town mysteries no book retreat mysteries uh, that's the name of the series it was a little far-fetched. Uh, there was kind of a whole aspect of it that was kind of fantastical. But uh, the story itself, the setting was very idyllic as far as this storybook town. Everything is uh, bookish themed. And, uh, and I thought it was a lot of fun. So uh, if it sounds like something that you would like, then I would recommend it. I thought it was a lot of fun. But just know that it kind of goes out there a little ways <laughs> but maybe you know that'll be a fun direction that the book can take that the series can take as it continues on and then most recently for our mystery book club i read her royal spinest by reese bowen which incidentally is um a, a book that they read on courtney's channel uh for the her cozy mystery book club they read this um maybe July. So I knew already, because we've had our 
books lined up for a while. I knew that we were going to be reading this for September, so I didn't watch her live show or anything like that, and I didn't get around to reading it until just recently. So I finished reading it the morning of book club, and I had enough time to go and watch her live show, and I'm glad I had a chance to do that because they brought up a lot of interesting points, some that I agreed with, some that I didn't really you know, care one way or the other, you know, it, it was just interesting, the different opinions, and it gave me some really good background research, I guess, to then go and lead my own book club, because it, uh, it gave me some ideas for discussion topics, which were awesome, so, Courtney, if you're watching this, thank you for, um, for that, uh, because that was, uh, that was really good, it was very timely that I got to, a chance to watch that video on the same day as my own book club, uh, this, I guess the controversy about this book centers around the fact that you don't even have a murder until almost 50% into the book. So that doesn't really fit the formula for a mystery or a cozy mystery. However, because this is the first book, I'm going to give it a lot of grace because I really enjoyed getting to know the characters in the first half of the book. And I think it gave us a good foundation for the series. I think it's going to be a really entertaining series. And it's so easily written in that it's, well, I don't know, it probably wasn't easy to write, but it is written so smoothly that it's really easy to read, and it's fun to read. There were times I laughed out loud. I enjoyed the characters. Now, her best friend, I wouldn't want as a best friend to save my life. <laughs> I did not like how her best friend was always after her to do this one certain thing, which I didn't think she should do it anyway, but at least I'm really glad that she stuck to her guns. She didn't follow her friend's advice. She stuck to her own path, and, and that's really good. So, um, anyway, uh, I, I enjoyed the book. I thought it was great. I, I think I ended up rating it five stars because it didn't bother me that the murder was farther on into the story, but I can see the point that maybe this should be categorized as chick lit as opposed to a mystery, but there was a mystery, so... I'm, you know, you could, you could look at it from both perspectives. So I enjoyed this a lot and I definitely will, um, plan to continue reading the series. I thought it was a lot of fun. So I think that's all of the mysteries that I have read recently. I am going to continue to read mysteries all throughout the year, especially now that I am, uh, and hosting a mystery book club. Our next book is going to be a little bit grittier, a little more disturbing. We're reading now the A Great Deliverance by Elizabeth George, which I've read before and I'm going to reread. And then for um, November, we're going to read a true crime book, which is going to be the... Um, oh, goodness. The Midnight Assassin. And that, I believe, is uh, about the first serial killer in the United States. So that should be really interesting. So uh, so anyway, I just wanted to share with you the mysteries I have read recently, and I want you to tell me about the mysteries that you have read recently. I would love to hear about them. Uh, oh, another one that I plan to read pretty soon is The Cat, The Quilt, and the corpse. That is our current selection for the Book One Cozies Club. So um, there's discussion threads for that set up already on our Mystery Madness Goodreads group. Die from Dice's 19 Hearts is the host for the Book One Cozies Club. So I hope you will check out those discussion threads and be sure to chip in and, uh, and comment if you have read or are planning to read any of the books that we have been reading or are going to read or are currently reading. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.